Brought in a 2004 model year truck with a Caterpillar engine this time. Wanted to show you something that was just a little bit older and a little bit different than what we'd seen earlier. I did the connect and scan with it and brought up six modules. Engine, anti-lock brakes, and some body control stuff. Let's start with the instrument cluster. Instrument clusters on Freightliner or medium duties have some nice bi-directional control capabilities. Reading and clearing faults are an option as well as looking at actual values, but let's take a look in the special functions. We have an instrument control function that comes up on these medium duty freight liners. This enables us to command dash gauges to read uh, a specific output so we can see if the gauge is actually functioning and accurate. By turning the on and off button, we push the engine oil pressure gauge to 50 pounds of pressure. Hit the continue button, it'll work to the next gauge. We've got a coolant temp gauge we can do the same thing with. We command that to 175 degrees and check the accuracy of the gauge. Speedometer functions the same way. Keep in mind at any time we can toggle to our wiring diagrams or technical information. All right, I backed up to the list of modules available. Let me show you a couple other buttons that are available on the bottom of the screen. At this point, we can hit the system info button to see those wiring diagrams and technical data. We can also hit the VIN info button to pull a complete VIN decode of this vehicle. You can see it's an 04 Freightliner built with a 7.2 liter engine, actually built in Mount Holly, North Carolina. This is some of the detail that's available when you enter the VIN. Now when we do that connect and scan, it actually pulls the VIN out of the engine controller and does the scan for you. I'm going to select the engine and go take a look at some of the Caterpillar controls that are available. I haven't talked much about the identification button on the top of our list. That'll actually pull module information from this controller. It's actually pretty valuable stuff. You can get in and get an ECU serial number out of it. You can also determine which software the controller is running. There's some configuration information that's available. Torque and RPM ratings and some vehicle information including VIN number. This is the VIN we were able to pull and decode for this vehicle. We have simple trouble code reads with diagnostics available. Under actual values on a Caterpillar, there are a few interesting things. We're able to display a graphic that shows you, in this case, the vehicle speed on the left and how much time was spent at each vehicle speed. There are similar graphs for engine RPM that are available. We also have the ability to look at those engine sensors. Let's bring up a list. Same sort, similar sensors. Let's bring one up on the screen. Now notice, even though this is an older vehicle, and it's a, a, about a 10 or 11 year old model, we're still going to see pretty good speed on the tool. Let's check that out. I pulled up the accelerator pedal sensor. I know we've done that a few times, but I just want to drive home that point of how consistent this tool is on different engines and on different vehicles. We also have some key bi-directional tests. Under actuators, we have both a manual and automatic process for doing cylinder deactivation. We have the ability to command certain engine functions like the fan. Under special functions, we have the ability to change those key parameters that we talked about earlier.
injector coating is available for Caterpillar engines. Let's move things along a little differently now. We're going to bring in a trailer simulator and show you how the tool works on trailer anti-lock brakes. We've shown you considerable truck coverage today. We'd like to show you a few other things. In addition to covering powertrain, we do have coverage for trailer anti-lock brakes. Let's take a look. Note that I put the tool in simulation mode. This is a key feature of the tool. If you have a truck or a trailer that's coming in for service and you're not sure if you have coverage, putting the tool in simulation mode will allow you to connect as if the truck were there to check specific coverage. Note that we have several trailer manufacturer coverages for anti-lock brakes. Let's go look at a Bendix system. Here's the location of the connector for the diagnostic tool. Note that although we've switched from a powertrain coverage to trailer coverage, the menu remains the same. We have the ability to read and clear faults with troubleshooting. We ha also have the ability to look at live data PIDs from the trailer. But some key features are the bi-directional controls listed. We can do a full modulator test as well as triggering the ABS warning lamp on the dash. Under special functions, we have the ability to look at the vehicle speed sensors live. As you're connected to a tractor, you could pull that trailer down the road and visually see if those uh, ABS sensors are responding. Let's look at a different ABS system just for comparison. Note again, same menu, reading and clearing faults and looking at actual va values, plus considerable bi-directional control. We have a braking simulation test. Special function shows us the chance to change key parameters. Under adjustments and settings, we have a chance to set up the service intervals. I showed you how to connect to the trailer ABS system direct. There are a couple other options for connecting. Most systems that are CAN based can connect through the tractor when the trailer is plugged in. We also have an adapter available that enables you to connect in line from the tractor to the trailer and scan the ABS system. You can also plug this in direct to the trailer and power it to scan the ABS system. While I've got you in demo mode, let me show you a couple other key features. Everything we've done so far has been through a six or nine pin connector. We also have a 16 pin adapter available for many medium duty applications. Select medium duty trucks and you'll bring a list up of all those medium duty trucks that we can address. Some of these require additional input uh, to manually select the vehicle. For that, we have a VIN decoder to bring up some of the key information. You can manually input a 17-digit VIN and pull that vehicle specs up uh, right off the screen. Let me punch one in and show you. I put in a VIN for a 2006 Isuzu. Uh, the key thing here is to show at the bottom the 4HK1-TC engine code. You can get this off the sticker on a truck, but on the tilt cabs, sometimes it's difficult to tilt the cab to get to the sticker to see it. By using the VIN decoder, we have a simple way for you to pull that code up. Now when we go to the Isuzu coverage, we'll select medium duty and bring Isuzu up. You'll see all the trucks that are covered. We'll select that N-series truck and bring up the different engine families that we can cover. We had the 4HK1-TC coverage. 
you'll get a screenshot that shows you what uh, systems are available to cover. We want to go into the engine. It'll bring up two choices, either a CAN system or a VPW system. Select one and continue on. You'll get a photo that shows you where the diagnostic connector is located. Hit the continue button and it'll load the module to do this vehicle scan. Read and clear faults, actual values, and great bi-directionals. Under actuators, a couple of key things, cylinder deactivation, some injection control, and a turbocharger actuator. Special functions will allow us to code the injectors and also do a fuel pressure test. Adjustments and settings allows us to force a particulate filter regen. We have one other option when you're IDing the vehicle. If you can't find that engine family and want the, the scan tool to do the search for you, no problem. Let's back up a little bit here. We picked that N series. Again, we know it's a 4H, 4HK1 TC system. Now, if we don't know what anti-lock braking system is on this vehicle, leave the selection at all, go to system overview. This will again bring up the, the connection location. Hit continue. It's gonna do something called a group search, where it's gonna go out and look for all the systems that it can find. This may take a couple minutes depending on the number of systems available on this vehicle. You'll see this screen come up where it's going through each individual system. It starts with the immobilizer. You'll see the systems that are available pop up on the list behind it. Remember, we're in simulation mode, so all the systems available will show, will show up. If you're actually connected to a truck, only the systems that are on that truck will be represented in the list. We can also use this manual selection process on controllers specifically. If we back up to the home screen and select the powertrain controllers button, we'll bring a list of all the modules we can see. Let's take a look at International. Scroll to the Navistar selection. It'll bring up all the Navistar systems that we can see. We'll select the Navistar engines. A list of all the available engines will be on the right. Let's take a look at a Max Force 7 engine. Remember, we can toggle to repair information. Here's an international wiring diagram for this engine. Note the component locations. We also have some key bi-directional tests available. Under adjustments and settings, we can do the particulate filter regeneration, forced regen, and a calibration of the mass airflow sensor. This shows you a way to manually hook up to a controller. So if you specifically want to jump into one without doing the group search, you have that option. Note how many controllers are available. Engine, transmission, anti-lock brake systems are all on the list. There are two other buttons on the home screen I'd like to show you. The last 30 vehicles will show you vehicles that you've connected to. You can scroll through the list. This makes it easy for repeat vehicles to jump right into that connection. You can also use the favorites button. 
to lock in vehicles that you work on more often. This is great for fleets. That includes the live tool portion. Let's recap what I showed you on this webinar. We showed you the components of the ESI heavy duty truck scan tool, including the VCI that features wired and wireless communication. We showed you the cables that come with the kit, the 6-pin, the 9-pin, and the 16-pin, the tablet PC running a Windows operating system, and the ESI software from Bosch. We plugged in live to several vehicles, including a Peterbilt with a Cummins ISX engine. We showed you a Freightliner with a Detroit DD-15 that featured four separate controllers for emissions. We plugged into a medium-duty Freightliner with a Cummins ISB and showed you the Allison automatic transmission coverage. And we also plugged into another medium-duty Freightliner that featured a Caterpillar engine. We showed you specific coverage for engines, transmissions, anti-lock brake systems, and body control systems. We tested fault codes both reading and clearing. We showed you the ability to read live data, including graphing mode and gauge mode. We showed you bi-directional controls, including simple things like turning a fan clutch on and off, and more complex things like cylinder deactivation and forced diesel regen. We showed you the wiring diagrams that are interactive and include component locations. We also showed you the technical information and the step-by-step -step trouble code troubleshooting that's available. Some additional coverage we went through was the trailer anti-lock brake system, some Isuzu coverage, and some international coverage and we showed you how to connect to these modules individually without the connect and scan function. Some other neat features were the ability to view saved reports, a full VIN decoder, the last 30 vehicles that display on the screen and an option to include your favorite vehicles on the list. Thanks for joining us for this webinar. We hope you found it informative and that it showed the true power of the Bosch ESI truck diagnostic system. If you've been submitting questions, we're going to break now to the question and answer session.